This video continues my series on local voice control in Home Assistant. Today, we're going to create your own wake word. We're going to do that by training it through some tools that are readily available and freely available to you. And it's super simple. So let's get started. So for creating your own wake word or training your own wake word, we're going to follow the guide that was written by Home Assistant. And all of this works through the open wake word add-on, which you should already have. And I'll talk about prerequisites in a minute. If you want to understand how all of this works and you can get into the nitty gritty details about it, this open wake word GitHub page talks all about it. It goes into all of the details about how the whole thing works. And you can even get into some super, super detailed information on how to do this through one of the notebooks that was created. Uh, for the training piece. It, de it demonstrates the process of uh, training a new open wake word model using synthetic speech generated with open source TTS models. And it goes through every single step in here. There's different levels of, of these notebooks where you can go from high level to this one where it talks about detail. So if you really, really wanna get into the nitty gritty of it, this is where you go. This is not what we're gonna to do to build and train a wake word today. This is just information for you to reference if you really wanna get into how this stuff works. All right, so for the guide, here are some prerequisites. You need the latest version of Home Assistant as of this filming, that's 2023.10. That's when all of this stuff was kind of added. You need the M5 Stack Atom Echo Development Kit. Uh, and you have also need to have completed the voice assistant tutorial. Now I did my previous video on this, building out this voice assistant tutorial with the M5 uh, stack Adam Echo. So make sure you have done all of that. If you don't, uh, if you haven't, then um, come back to this afterwards. All right, first of all, most important part, think of a wake word. This word is either a short phrase, three to four syllables, it's not commonly used, and so that means it doesn't get false triggers by people talking around it. Unfortunately, only wake words in English are currently supported as of this video. So let's open the wake word training environment. This is where we're gonna actually yeah. do all of our work. When you first open it, it's going to speak the word, the target words that are already on the page, which happens to be this one here. This is the one that uh, is defaulted, or one of the ones that's defaulted in the install and the one that they recommend you use when you initially set up voice commands or wake words through Home Assistant. I'm gonna change it to something else, something like that. Now, once you put the word in here, you're gonna to wanna to push this button over here on the left. This is the play button. And you want to listen to how it sounds. And if that's the way you want it to sound, then you can move on to the next step. And first, when you do that, you'll get a an information a warning about who wrote the book and whatnot, because you're going to run some code and it wants you to understand that. So run it anyway. It'll take a second or two. The first time you run it, it'll take about 30 seconds to build this. And then once it does that, then it'll speak the word. And so listen for that word make sure it's the way you want it to sound. When it's finished, you'll hear it pronounce the word. If it's the way you want it to sound, and this is the way it needs to, or it needs to sound the way you're going to say it. Um, so if it doesn't, you need to maybe move some words around to make it sound like you want. So let me play it again. And I don't know if you can hear that. Let me see if you can hear that somehow. And you can keep playing it. It's not quite the way I want it. So I want to say rumpel, P-O-L-E. So I'm going to put an O in here and have it generate that O and see how that sounds. And it's faster the second time around if you make a small correction like that. Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. Rump. So I'm going to try putting a space there and see if that's any better. Rumpelstiltskin. So now it says Rumpelstiltskin. So rump old stiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. So you play around with this until you get it just right. It, some suggestions here are instead of saying these words, you spell them out phonetically or spell out numbers with letters instead of just the number. And you want to avoid all the punctuation except for maybe a question mark and an ex exclamation and remove all of the Unicode characters. So just basically letters. 
uh, in here. And again, if that's the way you want it to sound, then we go on to the next step. So the next step then is to actually build this out. This is the part, and you can read that up here, you're going to run this and the runtime drop down is right here. So this is where we're going to run all. And once you are comfortable with the word and you run all, it's time to take a break because this is going to take up to an hour to run once it's all done. And then once it's completed, what it's going to do is just going to create two files for you to download. And once it does that, we'll come back here. And I will show you what to do with those files. Now, remember, you've got to make sure you have all of the other prerequisites complete because you're going to put those files into your Home Assistant instance, and then it's going to be able to allow you to select the word that you just built. All right. So let's go ahead and run all. And then you'll okay, see skin. you'll see all of this stuff going on here. A whole bunch of things will continue to run in here. And then, like I said, it'll run for a long time. Now, here are some caveats to this. Uh, let me see if I can, if it's nose down here in troubleshooting. Um, the environment is on a collab space. It runs on resources offered by Google and, and those resources are intended for small scale, non-commercial personal use. What that means is there's no guarantee that these resources that you're trying to use right now are available. Um, one of the things I should have said is make sure you keep this tab open when it's running, don't close the tab down. I know Google likes to put things in the background, so I'm just gonna slide this out of the way and let it run in the background. Oops. All right, so again, there's no guarantee resources are available. If a lot of people are using this environment right now or at the time you're trying to do it, it might be very slow in its execution or it may not run at all. As I mentioned, it's 30 to 60 minutes for the run to complete. That's normal. Uh, if things are slow and you want to wait, you can just uh, wait and try your stuff another time when the other people aren't using it. The other option is you can pay for more computing resources, which would mean that you have a Google account that has the ability to purchase things. And then you would upgrade to Collab Pro and then select your resources and all of that would make things run faster. I think if you're just playing around with it, start this up, go do your thing, and then come back uh, an hour or so later, the file should be downloaded to your computer and then you can do the next step. So we'll go do this here in just a few minutes once this whole thing has built the wake word, trained it and all of that. Um, so we'll see you in about an hour, uh, which will be about three seconds in uh, computer time. Okay, so it's been all of an hour or more, I didn't get an exact time, but it did take pretty much most of the time. If you're using a non-standard word like I am, uh, it may take longer to train it. Again, it's all dependent on the resources being used in that collab space. So let's get into actually moving this stuff over and putting it into Home Assistant. Now there's a prerequisite for doing that. Uh, let me just go back over to the guide here. You have to have the Samba or Samba add-on installed. So if you go over here to the add-on store or add-on dashboard and you click on the add-on store over here on the bottom right, you should be able to search for Samba. Now I'm already running this. It's the Samba share add-on and I'm already running this. So I actually have a Samba uh, connection to my home assistant instance so that I can send these files. So that's a requirement. And we're gonna access my Home Assistant instance via Samba to the share directory. And I have it mapped to Drive X here. And so what the guide says is we want to uh, create a folder called open wake word. So we should have slash share slash open wake word. So let's do that now. I'm just gonna create a new folder. Oops. Let me get this up where you can see the whole thing. Create a new folder called Open Wake Word. And I'm going to open that folder. It's empty right now. Now these files that I downloaded are gonna be in my uh, download directory. And there's two files. There's the TF Lite file and the ONNX file. The TF Lite file is the one that you want to use. And you're going to put that again into this open wake word directory. So I'm just going to drag this up here and drop it into this directory right here. 
And where'd that go? So now you can see that I have a file here. Now, according to the directions, you're going to drop that, web, that TF Live file in the folder, which we did. Now we're going to go to settings, voice assistants. If you have not created a voice assistant, uh, you should, but you already should have done that because you followed along with the, uh, the $13 blah, blah, blah thing that they mentioned in the prerequisites. She should already have a voice assistance folder or a voice assistant set up. So I'm still going to go over there under settings, voice assistance, actually go right to it. And I do have the home assistant cloud one that I'm using. And I'm going to be able to go down here to the bottom of this. And where it has wake word, that wake word that you just created should be in the selection. So here's my Rumpel Stiltskin wake word. And so I'm able to choose that and I'm able to then click on update. And now if I say that word, it should actually work properly. Let me go ahead and do a demonstration here. And there's my Adam Echo. Let me shut some lights off so you can see the colors. You can see it kind of, it's a, um, like a purplish pinkish color right now. So if I say the word Rumpelstiltskin, turn on game room. Turned on light. You can see that it's uh, responded to the wake word by flashing blue and then responding back to me while it's talking in green. So let me do it again. Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. Turn off game room. Turned off light. And there you have it. So now you see that it has um, recognized the wake word that we just created. So it was very, very simple to do that. Uh, let me show you a couple other things on the website here. Uh, troubleshooting stuff. So if the Atom Echo does not start blinking blue when you say the word, uh, you can either go into the ESP Home integration and make sure that that wake word or use wake word is enabled. If it still doesn't work after you've done that, you may need to go back and work on the training environment uh, and tweaking it a little bit. In the training environment, there are some, uh, some stuff here in the model section that talk about how you can change some of these parameters. So for example, number of examples, it's how many examples of your wake word are generated. Uh, the default's a thousand, but between 30 and 50,000 is often best. So you would take the slider and move it up. Remember, anything you change here may increase the amount of time it takes to build out your wake word or train your wake word. You can also do the number of training steps and the, the uh, false activation penalty. So all of those things can be adjusted down here in these steps right here. Uh, so when the default values, are, are sh which are shown down here, um, are selected, it takes about 30 to 60 minutes. Uh, if you train on more examples or train for longer, Try changing the runtime type to a GPU to significantly speed up the example. So that, like I said, if you up this to 30 to 50,000 samples or examples, it's going to take significantly longer. So you want to use GPU as the type. Uh, and I'm not even sure. Yeah, under change runtime type, you can change that to a GPU. Uh, when the model finishes, you can navigate to my custom model. Uh, and download your target wake word onyx or tft files which we did already so there is that um, it's very very easy to create your own and train your own wake word because uh, the work has been done to build these training models for you which is an amazing thing so uh, play around with it remember that when i did this stuff i used this in a quiet environment uh, and it worked right out of the box i didn't have to do any tweaking necessarily to do that in fact, it almost works better than the standard OK Nabu that I was playing with, maybe because it's a very uncommon word. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments below and um, uh, stay tuned for more of these videos. There's other things that uh, will be coming out on wake words and local voice control and home assistant in general. So stay tuned, subscribe if you're not, so you get notified whenever I make those videos and send them out to you. And thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.